What's going on, Fight Fans? Welcome to the FN Studios. I am your host, John Ramdeen, and this is a special best of edition of Five Rounds. And today we look back at one of the most popular segments on the show. We look at Robin's Breakdown, and we start with the former WEC featherweight champion Uriah Faber and his level change. You know, when a guy is using a level change, when he goes to shoot, he has to change his level. This is the beginning of a shot, and, it'll, and it allows his opponent to register that as a visual cue that a takedown is coming. Uriah Faber uses that, but he also uses it to set up strikes, he uses it to set up knees, and he uses it to keep his opponent Googled. Let's take a look at some of this footage here. You know, here we're just seeing him fake that level change. You're getting Jorgensen to think about the fact that a takedown could be coming. And he even uses it and goes a little deeper, faking the takedown in its entirety to set up strikes. So he's got Jorgensen thinking about everything that he does at this point, and then he uses it, and he comes up with uppercuts. He uses it, and he switched to a straight two all the way down, and that is nice and deep. You know Bang Ludwig has really worked to improve that. Once he's you know, got Jorgensen thinking about that, he can switch out to the liver as well and throw that. And you know that that is going to start wearing Jorgensen down, wearing him down to the body, and wearing him down mentally. Use some switch knees as well. And once you use all of this striking, all of a sudden the takedown will come very easy. Jorgensen's thinking about the striking, and he just shoots it. It's that use of the level change, that mixing it up from up to down, that really worked for him. And man, he has mastered this skill. In the stand-up game, a lot of guys just go in and trade, and it becomes like one complicated rock, paper, scissors, where if you're throwing a jab, cross, hook, and I'm throwing a slip, slip, level change, body shot, I win. That's my paper to your rock. But a lot of guys are really training their brains through tons and tons of repetition and practice so that they can improvise within the fight. And it's fascinating. We saw Condit do it recently. This is going to be the breakdown, but this one's going to get pretty nerdy, so I'm going to need my glasses. All right, bear with me. Now with Condit recently, we saw the way that he fought and it didn't look like he was just unloading unprepared combinations. He was using his kinesthetically adaptive unconscious. Robin Black, what the hell does that mean? Well, in his book, Blink, Malcolm Gladwell defined the adaptive unconscious as your brain acting as a giant computer that quickly processes a ton of data that we need in order to keep functioning as human beings. You know, when you walk down the street and a truck is coming at you, you don't have time to cycle through all your options before diving out of the way. Of course you don't. Your adaptive unconscious takes care of that. Now, Condit's adaptive unconscious is specialized kinesthetically, so it instantly processes his combat movement. Does that make sense? Well, how does he do that? First thing, he's got to be really, really fluid. The great Bruce Lee said you must be like water, and Condit indeed moves like water. It's this flow that allows Condit's unconscious to amend his attacking and defensive movements mid-fight whenever necessary. Wow. <laughs> rapid cognition. Condit has high level rapid cognition and that's defined as the ability to gather and process the necessary information for a sophisticated judgment in a short time. All right? He also has kinesthetic awareness. That's defined as sensitivity to the movement of your body through space that contributes to your ability to balance and move fluidly. In combat sports, it allows the elite athlete to know where he is in, re in relation to the opponent at all times, making it easier to attack and defend. And he has an infinitesimal reaction time. Now normally for the average level athlete, the process for action is your eyes see a stimuli, it sends a process to your brain, your brain processes it, it sends the signal down your spinal cord to the part of your body that has to act. Now for Condit and other highly evolved athletes, their bodies actually burn a reflex loop and they cut the brain out of the process and greatly reduce the reaction time. For these guys, it goes stimulus to eyes, loop down the spinal cord to the part of your body that acts. And we can see that in Condit's motion, we've seen it in Anderson Silva, a ton of other guys, the top level guys. Now all of this allows Condit and others at that level to perform the amended action when necessary. In other words, this level of highly evolved combat sports athlete is able to kick ass without thinking. Let's take a look at Condit's performance. We see it throughout. Look at that. Now, we're going to look at that in slow motion. He does a spinning kick, and the moment he realizes it misses, he amends and suddenly throws a spinning back fist, ties it in. He didn't think about that. He barely practices it. His, his mind was improvising. We see it here. He needs to create space. Suddenly, he elbows his way out and then goes to the long-distance weapon. Throughout this, once he starts flowing, you can see, look at that. He throws the straight right hand, weaves under, and is like very acutely aware of where he is as he comes up with the right hook. He's functioning on another level. 
Take a look at this one. He reaches in, that's gonna be the tie clinch and a, and a huge knee. But the moment he feels Campman move away, it becomes an elbow. That was instantaneous and that was his unconscious doing it. And it works in a lot of ways. Watch this, throwing a punch instantly defends to the takedown. His takedown defense improved dramatically and it's really his mind's improvement that lets him do it. Mid flying knee, you're very committed, but suddenly takedown defense again, just after committing to that flying knee. Does a great job. He was really flowing throughout this fight. And watch this, he's defending the takedown. Bruce Lee would be so proud, flowing like water there. Just an amazing performance. He was able to let his mind do its own job. And here, just while throwing, weaves under, turns his body, destroys him to the midsection. That was perfectly executed. This is a guy who is adapting unconsciously and he's performing at the highest level. This is the next generation. This is what we're gonna see guys start to do at the highest levels. Well, you know, Cormier is a monster. You better be scared if you gotta fight Dan Cormier. And I think this is a performance that really will strike fear into guys because we know he's the best wrestler in the game and we know that he's shown improved striking, especially against Bigfoot. This guy's look great, but when he can go and not be performing at his best and put it on the cage and work with that vertical playing field and win fights there, well, that's a scary thing. Let's take a look at how he did this. When he would enter to get this to the cage, he used striking to get in or timing like we see right here, pushed against the cage, great athleticism and strictly literally just drives Mir to the cage. And once there, he knows how to work this game. This is your standard clinch position, one underhook and control the forearm and do damage. And he worked outstanding from this position as we can see, pushing the bigger man back, tiring down, using his head nicely, but right here, this is the Cormier clinch. This is a little bit of variation, he's just very, collar tie up and used elements from the Muay Thai clinch as well and he's working from in here it's a little less familiar to Mir he's able to do damage in this spot show him a different look put knees in there like a tie clinch but threaten the go behind with that collar tie as well just a beautiful display of creativity against the cage and you can see how many different attacks he could use against this cage as well just beautiful execution and when he does exit because you're gonna need to get away at some points he always strikes on the way out you see him here tenderizing the body just a gorgeous display of work on the vertical playing field right here see as he exits just uses strikes uses knees and circles out this guy is a monster if you can take a guy like this and he looks that good wrestling and that good striking and then you develop this cage work and you're able to deal with a bigger man there man this is a future 205 pounder if he drops let's take a look at the board now, Carlo Prater is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, decorated jiu-jitsu player. And TJ was more than willing to take him to the ground, showing beautiful takedowns and control, including this one, hips deep, and boom, just drives him to the mat. When he got him to the ground, that's where it got interesting. Nine passes in this fight against this black belt, including this one right here, second and third efforts, back step, shakes off that leg, beautiful passing, and this one, just locks out that arm, uses his head deep on the hip, and steps over. To pass this man nine times, Times and dominate like that was just a thing of beauty and of course he went for that trademark armbar at the end that's caught eight pro MMA fighters and he'll be looking to get that on Gray Maynard if he can but it was the fight with handsome Matt Wyman that was so impressive this is a guy with a granite chin who uh, is absolutely fearless and he would go face to face with him and chin check with him right here landing beautiful elbows great Muay Thai clinch pressure on that collarbone pressure on the back of the head and execute knees to the body just drives him in there gets the hand to drop and then starts to unload with the elbows. Just an incredible ex uh, exhibit of a beautiful tie clinch. And look at this, reloads the level trajectory elbow and bam, an icy cold look on his face. That's the look of a guy who's taking his car to get his tires rotated. Not the look of a man who's in a crazy gunfight with a professional MMA fighter. And when you've got a guy who is that calm under pressure, man, you got yourself a scary dude. When we come back to this special best of edition of Five Rounds, it's more of Robin's Breakdowns, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to this special best of edition of Five Rounds as we are taking a look back at some of Robin's breakdowns and now Robin will show us what it takes to be game.
For your aggressiveness to work, you got to show a lot of gameness. Now, what is gameness? Gameness is an abstract idea. It's kind of loosely defined as the ability to show eagerness despite the risk of substantive injury. And for this to work for, for Brown, he needed to be moving forward. He couldn't let Jordan set his feet. And to do that, he is going to take damage because Jordan is a great counterpuncher. Let's take a look over here. When we look at this, you can see how clearly Brown is using aggression. He needs to keep Meehan moving backwards. And for Meehan, he's got to set his feet at some point here and use those counter punching. When he does, the goal is to teach Brown, as he gets the opportunity, we'll see it right here, start to teach Brown that when Brown is aggressive, Brown is going to get hurt. And that's a way of subconsciously teaching a man to stop moving forward. But it requires so much gameness to take this kind of abuse and continue forward, continue forward. It's something that's hard to understand from your couch, but this is where it really comes into play. He's been dropped brutally. His body is experiencing shutdown. He's in all kinds of pain. Jordan is seeking to teach him to stop moving forward, but he starts round two beautifully, continues that forward aggressive movement, and when he does, he's able to finish this young man. Just a phenomenal display by Matt Brown, and really, we talk about heart, we talk about guts, but gameness, that ability to keep moving forward when you're being hurt, just off the charts. Lineker just did a great job really showing full technique. He's gonna, he appears that he's gonna be the type of fighter who likes to stand and bang. They call him hands of stone. There's a certain 155 pound Canadian fighter named Sam Stout, who's also hands of stone, very similar fighting style. Let's take a look at the board and let's take a look at how this kid just put on an incredible uh, virtuoso type striking performance. You know, he's got a lot of confidence, young, eager, look at him controlling the distance early and introduces that shot to the body. So you have to worry about where you have your hands and protect your rib a little bit and then this happens. Overhand right, right onto the chin and look where Gashmov's hand is, low and in around the rib. You're going to remember that punch. If you live through it, the rest of this fight you're remembering, got to keep that left hand up high, as we see right here, protecting his chin with that left hand. But if you're going to fight this style, you got to have a takedown defense game. And Lineker showed a phenomenal ability to not only pre prevent the takedown, but do some damage. And yes, he wants him up. But on the way up, how about a knee right up the middle for your trouble? And look how icy cool he is. This is a guy who looks like he's going to get himself a nice Dagwood sandwich, not getting him himself in the middle of a fight. Closes the door nice with that left hook as well. Prevents the counter by ending on the left hook. This kid is very talented, moves nicely. Look at how nicely he moves. Just slips his head, always showing face. Hey, forgot about that overhand right? We'll remind you one more time. Keep that left hand up. It was part of the game he was playing. Then back to the body again. Where the hell am I supposed to keep my left hand if you're going to feed me to the ribs and the chin? And one last reminder. Keep your left hand up high or you're going to get knocked out. And when he does, look at this. One flinch, hand goes high, and boom. Look where his hand is now. Protecting his chin like he should. Opens up the ribs. And this kick to the ribs, really, it's all academic from here. That took the power out of him and Lineker, like a savage, gets in and gets this job done. Super athletic says, hey, don't you ever forget about me. I'm going to be knocking out a lot of guys at 125. I'm a big fan of this kid. I'm really excited to see him continue this campaign. Mike Pyle comes in here as a guy, we know that he's got a nice jujitsu game and it starts right here with keeping uh, Story's posture low. He's got that overhook on the right arm. The, the normal thinking is that Story needs to posture up and do damage, but he makes it so dangerous for Story when he does posture up by threatening him with sweeps and submissions. Keeps him low where he can't do damage himself and then now he starts to go to work. When he's taken down, he's immediately attacking that arm. He attacks a straight arm bar here, but he uses it and he commits to it because he's in no danger. The guard is serving its purpose of keeping him safe while he attacks. When you add this great guard game, and look how he uses the fence here. To, oh, nice. Just turns that arm back in. Now he's got a Kimura th threat. When you use, combine his great guard game with some well-educated judges that understand what's going on here, that the man in charge, the man attacking, is without question Mike Pyle. You've got a great couple of judges, and this guy's winning this round. And look here again. Again attacking that straight arm bar and when he doesn't quite have it's a nice threat here he switches to the other side he reaches underneath his knee to get a different type of high guard pushes the head across and controls from in here 
And you know what? Again, Story needs to win this fight. He slips an elbow in there as well. For Story to win this fight, he's got to posture up and he's got to rain down some blows. And look when he tries to do it. This is that threat I talked about. He comes up to throw punches and boom, he is swept immediately and immediately goes for this beautiful arm bar. Man, if you go up to punch a guy and instead you find yourself on your back or getting attacked with an arm bar, and here's another one at the end of the round, Mike Pyle did an amazing job of taking a ground game, a submission game, a game off of his back that a lot of people believe were not no longer applicable in MMA, and he used it against a wrestler with some good judges. He won the fight. Mike Pyle. Man, you're in for a treat every time you see this guy fight. And against Antoine Britt here, he just you know has to time and find that one hit. And when he gets it, this is vintage. He just is all over him and absolutely finishes him. And you will see this in almost every one of his finishes. He has the ability to find another gear. King Mo was another level of opponent, but even against King Mo, as soon as he hurts him, it's fifth gear immediately. But Mo is wily and he knows what he's doing and hurts him back. And when you hurt him, it's sixth gear. And he really, really brings it on, on King Mo here, drops him, and Mo is smart. He tried to find a way to slow this down against the fence. But even there, Fei Xiao was able to find his hole and just drill it in. And he's just thinking finish, 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 finish finish and he keeps driving it home until he puts this fight away. These instincts cannot be bought, they cannot be learned, they cannot be taught. And look at this one. Against Romero, he kitchen sinks this man, but as soon as he puts him down, it's right back to meat and potatoes, or in his case, rice and beans. Feijal means beans in Portuguese, and this guy's full of them. And he just comes on and unloads on this man, and when he does, he's, he knows the finish is coming, and there it is right there. The night is done but perhaps his best win of all as of late is against Mike Kyle. He hurts this man very early, 10 seconds into the fight, and this looks familiar. He's going after him the same way he's gone after these other opponents, but he flips the script here and looks for the submission. And as he does, he commits to this submission with a finishing desire the same way that he does with his striking. Just stays with it and commits to it. He, some guys would ease off if they're worried that they're gonna burn out, but not Fei Zhao, he will put you away. And man, like I said, you can cannot learn this skill. This is something genetic. It is born into this man, and he has it on the highest level of almost any fighter. Fasia. When we come back, it's more of the best of here on Five Rounds. Welcome back to this special best of edition of Five Rounds. I'm your host, John Ramdeen, as we take a look back at some of Robin's breakdowns. And some of the things he talked about were some of the submissions that occurred at UFC on Fuel TV 10. Oh, and Robin, kind of a theme here over UFC on Fuel TV 10, as we got eight submission wins. Uh, did that surprise you? You think? <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're in Brazil, the home of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and these guys put it on display eight submission victories on the night in 12 fights. You know, earlier this year, on an earlier five, downs, we, uh, five rounds, we broke down how submissions were trending down. There were 17.9% of fights were ending in submission. On this card, 67%. And when I was putting together a breakdown, sometimes you like to look at the details. This one, I just wanted to celebrate some of these great submissions. And let's take a look. On a night of submissions, this was all about what? It was all about jujitsu, just like it says on Hani Jason's back, and fitting for him to start off the main card with such a nice submission. They were all about different things, and this submission was really about finishing positioning. You know, he locks up this beautiful triangle, just puts the pressure on, but when he reaches underneath and he gets that far leg, he's able to add a little bit of extra torque, bend the head towards him, and just finish this. Cut off the blood flow and that carotid artery. Look at this. This looks like a picture out of a how-to magazine of how to do a triangle submission, just a beautiful breakdown. And look, now you're getting some elbows to the head, totally unnecessary, the man is already unconscious. And Ser Serafian here, this submission is all about brute strength. They call it the gentle art, but Serafian, there's nothing gentle about this guy as he inflates those giant airbags in his chest and just puts pressure on. The hand is even in the right place to defend. He doesn't even leave them out, and he finishes this absolutely beautifully. But man, there was a number of these, and Brago Neto, this is one of the best ones. Brago Neto just gets in here, and this is about opportunity. He finds a beautiful opportunity and leans into 
to this mean, mean knee bar. Smith will be walking with a limp possibly for years to come, but the submission of the night without question. Look at Silva here on this great wrestler, gets to the back and very quickly wraps it up. His was about positioning and skill and strength and athleticism and desire as he could finish the triangle or the arm bar and decides, let's just finish with a shoulder lock, puts pressure on that. Unbelievable finish and an unbelievable performance for this kid. So what is the anatomy of a fight of the night? Well, first you need a kid like this, absolutely fearless, and you need a veteran like this who knows what he brings to the cage and what people are expecting from him. And you start out with a great round one, and this kid fearlessly uses his reach, adds in some flashy stuff, and very early on you go, man, we're in for a fight. Look at that, he uses his teep again, using the reach, big knee up the middle, you know, just start strong, all flashy, all exciting. This is already looking like a fight of the night, but you gotta have a chin, and nobody has a chin like Sam. Out. Look at that. Takes one off the temple with the shin bone, cuts himself open, still has the wherewithal to grab the leg and chase him to the mat. And he's bleeding and he's smiling. He's smiling. That's the look of a guy going to his grade six sock hop, not a guy bloodied in a cage fight. This is shaping up to be fight of the night already. And we're only in round one. Sam Stout doing what Sam Stout does. And hey, you want to chuck a cartwheel kick in there for good measure? You got a bloodied up guy. Round one ends. Guys shake hands and you go, man, we're started on a good one. Round two starts this story needs to be written as a great story of war or you won't get your fight of the night and the only way that's going to happen is if stout can come back and he starts look how well he's moving his head early goes back to the game plan that he wanted of counter punching making him miss and landing like that you're hurting a guy now you're trying to take the fight back you don't let it stay on the ground too long and you get back to your feet and throw punches sam was able to just bear down and win round two finishing with strong elbows on top of a back and forth story of war we go into round three this is probably already fight of the night. But round three starts, both guys want it. That's a key here. Sam is committed to sticking with his game plan, and Kraus committed to trying to use that range and standing in here and putting in another tough, hard five minutes of fighting in front of this Winnipeg crowd, and boom, flying knee. Hey, just were you forgetting this might be a fight of the night? Well, I reminded you with my flying knee here. Beautiful back and forth fight. But we're ending this story with Sam Stout shooting a takedown to really probably ice round three and come back and win this fight. That's a fight of the night, but so is this. The kid catches an amazing guillotine choke with 15 seconds left and finishes the unfinishable Sam Stout. Sam is going to be disappointed in that. He's shaking his head, but it will feel a whole lot better when he cashes a little bonus check for $50,000. This kid has so much talent, and this young kid brought it. Another fight of the night performance. It was wonderful. Thanks so much for watching this special best of edition of Five Rounds. And don't forget to tune in next week as we bring you more mixed martial arts analysis. Thank you so much for watching. I'm John Ramdeen saying we'll see you next time.